my name is Kelsey Martin and for my science experiment I was going to find if cereal really does have iron in it. So for this experiment I wanted to find if the effect of changing the brand of cereal has on the amount of iron present in our bottles. So in other words I wanted to find how much iron would be shown in the bottle just based off how much iron content was in the nutrition value. And we're measuring it in milligrams. So for my prediction, I predicted that the cereal with the highest level of iron in in the cereal box itself would have the outcome of having the most iron in the bottle as well, visible in the bottle. So for my statement, I said that this experiment is about nutrients and how, and how manufacturers will put iron will add iron to their cereals in order to have that nutritional value um, and we're looking at this in the nature of science so for some of the vocabulary we talked about iron being a mineral that the body needs nutrients nutrients are also what the body needs in order to grow and function and iron is just one of those nutrients that the body needs supplements substances added to a person's diet to ensure that they get all the necessary nutrients and then we have percent daily value so when we're looking at the at a cereal box it'll tell us how much percent of each nutrient that we need in a, in a daily serving so for instance for iron if it says that it has say one of the cereals has 100% um, 100 iron. That means it has 100% of the value that you need for your diet. So our variables, the manipulated variable is the brand of cereal that we're using. So I picked four brands of cereal, picked Frosted Cheerios, which has 20% iron in it. We have the Captain Crunch, which has 40%. The mini wheats has 100% iron, and then I just picked one that was at Cocoa Pebbles, which is a 15%. So what we're looking at here is we have four different sets of iron percentages, and we're just going to see how much how much of a difference we have in the amount of iron per box of cereal. So. For the responding variable, it is going to be the amount of iron that is collected in the bottle, measured in milligrams, and then the stuff that we're keeping the same is the amount of water that we use, the amount of cereal that we use, and where we put the magnet on our bottles later on. So for the amount of cereal that we're adding, we're adding 250 milliliters of cereal and 250 milliliters of water. So we're keeping that same amount throughout. For the materials, we're using four boxes of cereals, like I mentioned, we're using Frosted Cheerios, Mini Wheats, um, Cocoa Pebbles, and Captain Crunch. We have two gallons of distilled water. We have four one liter plastic water bottles, which I have here, kind of showing. Um, I have a heavy duty magnet. I use scissors, duct tape, a blender, a measuring cup, and a large bowl. So these are, here's a picture of all the necessary materials. So to start the procedure, I needed to choose the cereals with all different um, amounts of iron in them. Then we cut the bottoms of all the um, at the bottoms of all the water bottles 
like so and then we just kept the funnel i did mess up on this one so this one has both of them empty then after you cut the bottoms off you tape the magnet onto this one side of the bottle duct tape it around make sure it's on there tight and then you put the 250 milliliters of the cereal um, and 250 milliliters of water into a blender. You blend that all together until it is very smooth and doesn't have any visible lumps of the cereal still in there. Then you're gonna pour the, it's like a slurry now, so you're gonna pour that through the water bottle and then you'll have the bowl underneath like so so you have the blender you're gonna pour it in here and the other side is gonna act like a, a funnel so after that you're gonna pour that through it's gonna come into the bowl you want to make sure that the magnet is at the bottom here just pretend like it's taped here because I had to take off the, ta the tape and stuff but it's gonna be here and you wanna make sure that the slurry goes right over the magnet to catch the iron that's in it. And then after that, you're gonna pour an additional 20 milliliters of water right over there to clean the iron. Um, and then after that, you're gonna leave it to air dry for one to two hours. And then after that, the iron pellet forms on the bottle. You want to make sure that you label each individual bottle so you know which cereal has that amount of iron on it. Um, and yeah, and then you just repeat the same steps for all four of the bottles. And then I have some of my drawings from when I was doing um, each of the trials for each cereal. So I have Frosted Cheerios, I have Captain Crunch. Um, I will say that the Captain Crunch took a long, a little longer to blend because it had like the extra like pieces in it that weren't as easy to blend as like the Frosted Cheerios were. And then I have the Mini Wheats and the Cocoa Pebbles. The Mini Wheats were also really hard to blend. We had to blend it for longer and many more times um, because it was like a it's thicker consistency plus it has the wheats in it so it's like very grainy got my data collected all my data I did it in milligrams so once once the iron formed on each of the bottles I put my data in and I collected it based off how many milligrams of the iron I saw And then collected the mean, the or after collecting the mean, I collected the median, mode, and range of each of the cereals. Here is my graph. We found that mini wheats had the highest number, and it exponentially went up the more the higher the percent of, the higher the percent of iron it was. So the results that we found are that the average amount of iron for the frosted Cheerios turned out to be uh, 3.9 milligrams. And then the highest, the average amount of iron in the mini wheats, which was the highest at 100%, it was 17.75 milligrams. And lastly, the average amount for, of iron in the Cocoa Pebbles um, which was at a 15% was 2.47 milligrams. So in conclusion, I found that the mini wheats had the highest percentage of iron in it, and it turned out it had the most, the highest average of iron in it as well, measured in milligrams inside of the bottles. And because of this, I found that they, that the mini wheats had the most iron out of all the other cereals. The other one, and because it's such a high percentage, it outweighed the other ones by a lot. Um, and I said that iron is 
typically added to breakfast cereals to make sure that it has the amount of nutrients that you need in your body per day. Um, and there aren't many cereals that are naturally rich in iron, so many manufacturers will add it to the cereals to make it more rich in the nutrients. And that would be an example of a food additive. They're adding iron to the food rather than it being already um, in there. And for real world application, scientists can use this information in order to see how we can, I guess how we can make cereals that are, nat or we can find cereals that are naturally rich of these ingredients rather than having to add them to the cereals. Um, and they would want to know why certain cereal brands have higher iron content than others by using this experiment. And here is my narrative diary. Started on March 29th when I found this idea. Um, gathered all my um, supplies April 5th. And then after that, um, I spread out my trials because this, this experiment took a lot longer than I feel like a typical experiment would take because I had to wait for it to air dry and stuff like that. So I did the first five trials for each brand in one day, and then the second, the second five trials um, for each brand of cereal on the next day. So basically, because my experiment had four different brands of cereal, I had to do, I would say about, I think 40 trials it took because I had to do each one 10 times. Um, so yeah, and then at the end, I finished my conclusion and my real world ex uh, application on April 14th.